The following webcast is part of the Building Embedded Control Systems webcast series presented by National Instruments and Strategic Alliance Partners. This entry in the series is titled Building a Remote HMI Using Web Technologies. My name is John McBee. I'm a Senior Project Engineer at Bloomy Controls. Bloomy Controls is an NI Platinum Alliance Partner. We provide turnkey systems, consulting and training for automated test, data acquisition and control. To learn more about Bloomy Controls, visit us on the web at www.bloomy.com. HMI stands for Human Machine Interface. An HMI is an interface that runs on a client and provides the UI for data visualization and control of an embedded system. An estimated 80% of NI embedded customers require an HMI for their application. When you are building an HMI for your embedded system, you have numerous options. And one good way to break down the selection process is target device proximity to the HMI. If I am near the target, I would select different technologies to build up the HMI versus if I'm far away. In this presentation, we will talk about one method that works well for remote HMIs, but also, if desired, can scale and be reused locally. For embedded compact RIO applications, communication with a remote client is often a critical part of the project. Embedded applications typically function as data servers because their primary role is to report information to the client. They are also usually capable of responding to commands from the client to perform application-specific activities. There are many data transport mechanisms available for getting data from the embedded device to the HMI. Choosing the appropriate one for your application depends on your communication model. This presentation will focus on web services. LabVIEW Web Services, introduced in LabVIEW 8.6, offer an open and standard way to communicate with VIs over the web. Consider a LabVIEW application deployed across a distributed system. LabVIEW provides features such as network streams for establishing communication, but many developers need a way to communicate with these applications from devices that do not have LabVIEW using standard web-based communication. In certain situations, an embedded application will need to interface with multiple operating systems or third-party applications. In these situations, it may be difficult or impossible to have the client running the LabVIEW runtime engine. Creating a web service on our embedded device will allow the HMI to be rendered in a web browser on a client, regardless of the OS, and can allow data to be consumed by third-party applications through HTTP. The Web Thin Client is a user interface provided by an application through a web browser with a focus on being platform independent. The main features are cross-platform, meaning it does not depend on an operating system, and it does not require anything to be installed on the client. The way it works is you type the URL in the web browser. A uh, request is routed to the web server or HTTP. The web server responds with thin client content. The browser receives the content and renders the thin client. And the browser periodically asks for updates from the web server. I'm going to take a minute and show you an example using Twitter Bootstrap and Google Charts. Of a, it's an example data dashboard built using LabVIEW web services. Here we have LabVIEW 2013, it's a pre-built project. Notice that in 2013 the web service is a, is a target under my computer. If I right click on the web service target, I can go to start and the web service will be launched. While the web service is firing up, let's take a look at Bootstrap and Google Charts. So Bootstrap is a front-end framework for developing responsive uh, mobile first projects on the web. Bootstrap provides a template uh, that is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So all the tools that we need to develop a thin client that we may not know as LabVIEW developers. If 
we go to the Getting Started tab, we can see that they include examples. And we can download the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS code behind each of these examples and use it as a starting point for our thin client. We can combine Twitter Bootstrap with Google Charts. And we can actually embed these chart widgets into our Twitter Bootstrap uh, UI. And these can be our data visualization tools. These are all free. They're all JavaScript driven. And it's as simple as finding the uh, UI element that you want to incorporate. It could be a line chart. Going to the page for that uh, UI element. And then looking at the example code. So for every UI element that Google Charts offers, they also give you the HTML and JavaScript code that you need to make it function. So it's just a matter of copying this code pasting it into an HTML document, and then updating it as necessary. To actually see the uh, demo program, I need to go back into LabVIEW, right-click on this HTML document, select Show Public URL, copy that URL to my clipboard, paste it into a web browser. I'm using Google Chrome, but it could be any web browser you like. And this is our data dashboard being served up through LabVIEW Web Services. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it. Notice how it resizes to fit. That's the responsiveness. So it'll resize to fit a tablet, or resize to fit a smartphone, or a web browser on a PC. There are some nice features built in that we can take advantage of. I can click on a data source and remove it from all of my charts at once. I can turn it back on. I can change the visualization from grouped to stacked. And all these animations and transitions are built into the JavaScript code for me. All that I have to do is grab the code, bring it in, and then uh, pipe data to it. If we scroll down, we can see live data being piped in. This is actually data being updated from uh, the embedded device using JSON files. So I have a, a JSON data file, my embedded uh, software is updating that file as it acquires data uh, built into the JavaScript code for this uh, thin client application is code that says to refresh the page periodically once every three seconds and part of that refresh is uh, reloading the JSON data from file and that gives us the effect of live data That was a quick example of combining Google Charts with Bootstrap and some nice styling to get a very nice, sleek user interface. That would be very tough to duplicate using LabVIEW. Uh, resources. For a deeper dive into the code behind that demo I just showed, visit Bloomy Controls, uh, www.bloomy.com backslash resources for the white paper and some source code as an example. Other resources on the web, W3Schools offers courses in HTML, uh, cascading style sheets, JavaScript, jQuery, all the technologies that you need to understand to make these things work. A link for Twitter Bootstrap, Google Charts, and then jQuery UI is another free uh, UI element uh, JavaScript based uh, tool set. There are many more out there. And lastly, visit uh, ni.com, uh, search for web technologies, and you can find multiple white papers. Thank you for attending this portion of the Building Embedded Control Systems webcast series. You can view additional webcasts at www.ni.com backslash build control systems.